Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to tell you a story about how I ended up working in one of the top um, research labs, clinical research labs in the city, while I was still uh, in my first year at university. I had entered the Applied Chemistry and Biology program at Ryerson and Ryerson University, and I started to learn about cell biology, basically, you know, what goes on in one single cell. It's like miraculous. It's like a little factory in there. So I was fascinated and I'm loving this. I start to think, you know, I want to learn so much more about this. I want to become a cell biologist, cell biology researcher. I want to, I was like, you know, maybe I want to go on and get a PhD and postdoc in this field. But at the same time, I knew that when you work in a field, it can be very different from the theory, from reading and learning about it. So my tactic was, I was like, you know, why don't I just go and work for a while in a lab and see what it's really like to learn cutting edge um, science. So I had this plan in first year and I find out um, one of the top cell biologists name and that they work at, um, they have a lab at Sick Children's Hospital, very, very big, um, fabulous hospital. And that this, um, you know, the research labs are in a separate building from the actual hospital. And to get in there, um, it's very restricted access. You have to be employed, you have to have like, you know, a badge and everything like that. Otherwise, um, you know, you have to be in there by appointment only. So I remember having the guts to walk in there. Well, first I had walked past so I can see what it looks like. And there's a security guard, you know, he was at the desk and he was always very strict about letting, I could see that and I was like, okay, 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 that's what I thought. So I, one day I finally get the guts and I walk in and I say, you know, I'm here to see Sergio Grinstein, name of the lab owner. Do you have an appointment with him? Yes, I do. I'm lying, right? I'm just gonna say, the, I'm just telling you the story. I was lying. I get a badge, I remember this. And he goes, you know where the, you know. I was like, yeah, yeah, I know where, <laughs> where to find him. I didn't know. I did know he's on the fifth floor. So take the elevator, I go to the fifth floor, and I'll never forget this. I assumed it was just one big long corridor with doors. I assumed there would be like like at an office where you have like the plaque by the door and says this is Peter Smith's office, or that there'd be some indication I'd be able to figure it out. No way, none of this existed. So now I'm like, do I just randomly open doors and go in? I remember walking uh, in one door that was open and going through and then that opened up to what ended up being the actual lab and all these you know literally you know uh, the white lab coats and people looking at me and I was like oh dear and just looking around to see if like just gathering my I couldn't understand would I find them here do I ask someone do I not so I wander around for a long time I couldn't bring myself to open some of these, you know, closed doors. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe this is a bad idea. Maybe I just shouldn't have come. Maybe I'll come back another day. Maybe I'll find out more information when I just think, okay, I'm just going to open one door randomly and ask and see what happens. So I knock and open and there's a woman sitting at a desk and I ask about after the, you know, Dr. Sergio Brinstein. They're like, oh, well, he's not here right now. It happened to be his office. Happened to be his office thing. Heaven's up above. And she's like, you know, he's not here right now, but he should be back. Why don't you wait a few minutes? And I did. And he walks in about five minutes later. And I remember, you know, this is 
now in retrospect, I'm impressed with my guts to do this because I was just honest with him. I said, look, I'm, you know, finishing up my first year in this program. I've been exposed to this and this and I'm loving it. I'm finding I'm very, very passionate about it and I would like to learn more. Then all I'm looking to do is get my foot in the door. And if you would be willing to, to um, let me work at your lab, I'm willing to work one or two days a week for free, like volunteer my time so I can learn what it's like and um, really get a feel and see if, if it is, you know, for me. And he was like, I'm putting you on a project right now. I'm going to pair you up with these two postdocs right now. I was like, oh, okay. So... I got my foot in the door. <laughs> now I was, I suffered from severe uh, social anxiety, like anxiety I, where, I, and so this is what, what makes me look back and think, wow, that was, that's over 20, over 20 years ago. Um, that was courageous. That was courage. I'm so impressed I went through with that and said what I said. I remember feeling inside like my body was just a tight wound up knot in my stomach. I thought I was going to throw up from the tension, but indeed he puts me on a project and it was, you know, involved human um, white blood cells and just understanding how uh, one of the receptors in the cell's surface, how does it know, how does it detect um, when its environment changes. So basically, in, in the bloodstream, how does it know when there's more sodium than there should be? And it sets off a whole chain reaction inside. So that's specifically what the project was. And I was like, this is it, this is so cool. And I worked there for, you know, volunteering for a year. Then I got hired as a summer student. And then I else did I end up going so in that time all the work that I did do on this project um, it did end up it ended up being me and one of the postdocs the other one um, moved moved away and so it got published and it got published in one of the very you know at the time at least a, a prestigious journal the journal of biological chemistry I was Anyways, got, it got published, and this was a huge deal because I was also listed as a second author. So the order in which you get uh, published denotes your level of involvement and um, in the in the uh, experiment, and basically is your street cred, if I can say that right. So the first uh, name will be the person who is doing the most work. This is this person's project. Then second author would be the second person who's done, you know, quite a bit of work and so on and so forth. And always at the end goes the person of the lab who's running the lab. Um, their name goes there. Um, and so it was just the three of our names. And this was a huge thing. So I remember this was getting published so it takes a long, at least at, at, at this time, it took a long time before um, you actually submit everything and then it has to go through different committees and be, you know, verified that, yeah, this is legit science and this is something that we do want to publish. And so it took almost two years, almost two years before it actually got published from the time that I had done the work. And at that time, I was 22 by that time. And I was like, it was the coolest thing ever. The other thing that was cool about it was by the time I finished, I, I ended up after the second year of university at uh, Ryerson, because I'm gaining so much of an interest, I wanted to specialize. So for that, I had to transfer to University of Toronto. So I transferred there, did an extra year taking all sorts of wonderful courses. And, um, but by the time I'm graduating, I had already learned everything in the actual field. I had learned the techniques and, and 
being taught to me. And I didn't realize what an advantage that was. That turned out to be a huge advantage. Anywhere I went, um, uh, you know, labs wanted to hire me before I even made it out the door. I had to go for, for a thesis and all, all sorts of things you have to do in your final year. And uh, I went to apply at all sorts of um, pretty cool labs. And uh, yeah, knowing all of this was uh, quite the advantage. So there's another story of daring to do, to follow sort of a passion and daring to show authenticity, I guess, like be straight up and say, I'm looking to put my foot in the door. I think, I think I did say this, you know, you'll see that I'm an asset. And doing it in spite of living with such anxiety, like I was so anxious and it was, it was hard um, psychologically on the inside, what was going on. But I did it and I'm very proud of that. And it's one of the pivotal events in my life that really shaped me and gave me courage and proof to repeat that kind of a, to, to take action that probably most people wouldn't take or that might blow up in your face or that, you know, you might get kicked out of a building for not having an appointment with someone you say you do. So there you have it. One of my fave, what shaped Calliope stories. All right. I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.